going to do another reading scary reddit stories. The last one wasn't too long, so I wanted to do a few more stories, and, and these are going to be paranormal. So I'm really excited to get into this. I haven't read these stories through, so I'm hoping that these are going to be some good ones. I'm on a post called Serious. What's the most paranormal thing that ever happened to you? So this one that says, My family, grandpa, grandma, mom, two aunts, and uncle, went camping at Bonnie Reservoir in Colorado. This would have occurred in the early 60s. The children ranged from ages 1 to 13, with one of my aunts being the eldest, uncle being behind at 11, my mom at 7 or 8, and my other aunt at 1. My grandparents would have been in their 30s, they were camping in a Volkswagen bus, the camping model specifically. My grandfather was an experienced outdoorsman, having grown up in rural Illinois during the Depression. Growing up, my mom and siblings were taken along on many camping trips. This particular trip was no different in its planning and remained routine until the evening, when my grandfather failed to return from a fishing excursion that he had undertaken by himself. 9 p.m. rolls around, and it's dark, blacker than the blackest black times infinity. <laughs> the family is concerned. My grandfather has never been late like this. Now, according to my uncle, and older aunt, my grandma decided to drive to the dock. This would be a logical place to begin the search. My grandma started to drive around the lake, not realizing she had made a wrong turn. After 15 minutes or so, my younger aunt started to fuss, and my grandma pulls off to the shoulder of the road to check on her. At this point, my mom, uncle, and older aunt have begun looking out the windows, and my uncle realizes they can't see the lake. My grandma has gotten the one-year-old settled, and she gets behind the wheel and begins to make a three-point turn to turn around. As soon as she fires up the bus, the three oldest kids see hundreds of rabbits running across the ground, away from the left side of the road the side that will be in view momentarily. As my grandma completes the first step of the turn, she throws the van in reverse and realizes she can't back up. There is a three to four foot ditch behind her and a similar ditch in front. She remembers putting the bus in park. A red light appeared in the distance with rabbits scurrying along the ground away from it. The light turned white then red. It was sweeping back and forth. It looked like my grandfather's signaling light. He used it often, and my family knew what it was. Now, as they are watching this light move back and forth, something slams into the hood, and bright white light floods the bus. My grandpa is up all night, after returning to the campsite late. He had run into an old friend on the water and stayed out later than anticipated. He got to the camp at midnight, and when he realized his family was gone, he went to the ranger station and asked for assistance. They searched for them and were preparing to dredge and or dive for the vehicle when the bus was spotted on an old service road 20 miles or so from the lake. My grandpa was the first to get there. He walked to the door, and as soon as he opened it, my grandma fell out of the driver's seat and said, Oh, thank God you're here. She landed in his arms and began crying. 
Her watch, which was purchased less than six months prior as a birthday gift, had stopped at 11.15 p.m., which would have corresponded with the flash of lights. The kids were sleeping soundly, and they had no recollection after the flash. My entire family, minus my youngest aunt, have told the story. They have made drawings of it. I believe them. They have nothing to gain, and they cry when they tell it. I get goosebumps. I have goosebumps. Oh my gosh. That was so crazy. Like, aliens? I feel like that's totally an alien type story, like an alien kidnapping. And so freaky. Like, can you imagine? You're just out in the woods, and then all of these rabbits start, like, running away. What? That reminds me of her movie happened in a movie or something. I can't recall what it was, but that is so scary. I got chills. I'm going to probably say that a lot in this because for me, the paranormal type stuff is the ones that scare me the most. Um, so I'm probably going to get really creeped out in this. All right, here's the next one. So about six months after I bought our house, I started noticing something odd. Every once in a while, I would catch a sight of something out of the corner of my eye and always assume it was my cat, since it was the same size, shape, and it moved like a cat. However, I would realize a few seconds later that my cat was in the yard or another room. I would try to look back, but nothing was ever there. It was so quick, I always dismissed it. Once, at night, I saw it on the ceiling, and I about had a heart attack. Oh my gosh. I also would hear things in the house. I thought my husband was doing the dishes due to the clinking in the sink, but then I would realize he was in the bedroom, and the kitchen was empty. It took about a year for my husband and I to start wondering aloud if we were actually seeing things or if something was up. Turns out, he was seeing stuff too. Just little flashes here and there. My husband said he heard some stuff too on his days off when no one was home. The biggest moment was when I woke up in the middle of the night and saw my cat curled up on a side table. I heard him purring. His fur looked darker, and his purr was lower, but I was half asleep and didn't notice. I went to the bathroom, and on my way I passed my cat sleeping in the hallway. It actually took me a few seconds, but I literally felt my chest turn cold. I went back to my bedroom and saw the bedside table was empty. We're pretty sure we got a cat ghost in our house. The only thing I know about the previous owner was that he was put into a mental hospital. I have had to route a bunch of paperwork back to him over the years because his affairs were very clearly not taken care of when he was hospitalized. My theory is that he had a cat that got lost in the shuffle, and it's waiting for him to come back. Oh, that last part was really cute and sad. But the other stuff is like really creepy. I've never seen Pet Cemetery, but my mom has. She like loved horror movies back in the eighties, and she would watch like all different ones, and she talks about that a lot. <laughs> so, I don't know. It just reminds me of, like, scary pet ghosts. Oh, man. Okay, so this one is a ghost one, I'm pretty sure. From pretty much the first night after my dad died, 
I started seeing him in my dreams. I didn't think anything of it at first, because I figured that's a perfectly reasonable subconscious response after losing a loved one. The weird thing, though, was that he looked seriously real. Everything else in my dream would have that strange, cartoonish vibe to it. Yet. I could look at my dad and count the individual hairs in his mustache and on his head. In one dream, I became lucid and realized I was asleep. I asked my dad point blank, Are you visiting me, or is this just a figment of my imagination? I need to know. He smiled, hugged me, and said, I'm here with you right now, son. I always will be. I love you. I woke up suddenly, and as I did, I saw a very light shadow. Had it not moved, I wouldn't have seen it. It was a head and shoulders, leaning through the doorway and into my room. As soon as I saw it, it quickly moved away and backed out of my room. Somehow, it was calming rather than scary. I was absolutely amazed because that's exactly what my dad used to do when I was little and he left really early for work. He'd pop his head in and say goodbye. The way this shadow moved was exactly the same. I'm convinced it was him checking in on me. If that wasn't strange enough, my mom called me downstairs that same morning. She tells me to go into the living room and look at the floor. I go in, and guess what? Dad's reading glasses have somehow ended up slap bang in the middle of the room. That 110% confirmed it for me. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I know that that one is like written and meant themselves says that it was calming rather than scary, but for me, I find that really scary and creepy, and the reason why is because I, I do think that paranormal stuff probably happens. I've never experienced anything, nor do I want to. think that ghosts exist. Like I said before in another one of these videos, I don't believe in like fairies and mermaids and like all that kind of stuff. And I also don't believe in ghosts, but I do believe in demons and angels. I know that sounds really weird, but my reasoning behind it is that believe in God, and I believe in Christianity. That's my religion. And so, I don't believe that ghosts stay here on earth. I don't believe that human souls stay here. Um, so, in my mind, if ghosts don't stay here, then what was that? Here's the next one. I was getting on an elevator, and there were two people in it. A young woman in a skirt, suit, standing near the front, and a clipboard 
and an older guy with a retired cop, security guard, wannabe cowboy vibe, <laughs> who was standing near the back. Texas peeps will know what I mean, but think plaid shirt, jeans, big belt buckle, one step shy of the cowboy hat. I said, y'all going down? The woman gave me a really confused look and said, Yes? I punched the button. Doors opened at the next level. The woman got off. I followed her and happened to glance back. The elevator was now totally empty. And now I knew why the woman had given me such a weird look. Because y'all is plural and she thought she was the only other person in the elevator. Can you imagine if that, if you were that woman and you're looking at this lady like, what? Okay, so it's weird because you don't realize until the ghost is gone how you didn't really see them the same way that you see other people. The only way I can think of putting it is that when you see real people, it's because light bounces off them and hits receptors in your eyes that process those signals into an image. When you see a ghost, there isn't light bouncing off anything, because there isn't anything there. So there aren't any receptors in your eyes processing it, so it's like your mind is picking up signals some other way and overlaying them image processed by your eyes. The effect produced isn't one of transparency, and it's not one you'll notice in the moment if you're distracted by other things, but on reflection, you can definitely realize that something is off. Whoa. I never thought of it that way. You're picking up on it? farm in a rural town in the western U.S., and our farm is ways out of town, so naturally it's pretty eerie at night. We flood irrigate, so the water needs to be moved from field to field, and those water changes just come whenever the fields are finished. At each end of our farm, there is a big row of trees that once again get kind of eerie at night. So my dad and I were driving down our farm road at around 3 a.m. Witching hour. We reach the row of trees, and as the headlights hit the trees, I saw a strange figure. It looked to be the rough shape of a human, but not quite the same. Taller and more hunched over kind of like a 6'3 old woman in a shawl. That's a visual that I didn't need. <laughs> That's so scary. I only saw it for maybe two, three seconds, but it was long enough to make my blood run cold. I was so freaked out, so I didn't say anything to my dad. About 30 seconds later, my dad started driving faster and looked over at me and said, I wasn't going to say anything, but did you happen to see a strange figure walk between the trees? <gasps> oh my gosh. I nodded, and we changed the water and went home. local legend about a creature that looks like what we saw that has been talked about since the 40s. It's supposed to be similar to a Native American skinwalker, and it would make sense to me. We have found Indian pottery and arrowheads all over our farm. 
neither of us have seen it again, but it's still in the back of my mind when I drive to that corner of the farm. <gasps> oh my gosh. Skinwalkers scare me so much. I don't know what it is about them, but I guess you could just view them sort of like werewolves or something. Here's the next one. When I was younger, I lived with my aunt, uncle, and grandmother with my little brother. One night, my aunt and uncle were gone and my grandmother was in her room next to my room. My brother was asleep at the bottom bunk of our bed and I woke up out of the blue. When I sat up, I saw an older woman staring at my brother from the corner of the room. Thinking this was my grandmother, I called out to her only to hear her respond from the other room. As I called out to her though, this woman looked up from the locked stare she had on my brother and I could feel her stare at me. It was absolutely terrifying. I banged on the wall and my grandmother yelled back that she was coming. She was rather immobile at the time, so it took her a few minutes to get to me. But during this time, I remember the figure in the corner bringing her hand up to tell me to be quiet with one finger over her lip. We literally didn't break eye contact. When I yelled again, she ran one finger across her neck while shaking her head no and the look on her face was of disappointment. Just as my grandmother turned the corner, I looked over at her and then looked back to the corner and the figure was gone. I was only 10 years old at the time, but I have dreams every now and then. I'm 22 now, about that night. I've been a believer of ghosts since. reminds me of those um, lucid dreaming videos um, where they talk about like they were lucid dreaming and they'll see like a figure at the end of their bed and what's really crazy about that is I've actually had that experience I've never had any paranormal experiences or really anything that scary, but I did have a lucid dreaming experience, and it was not like that, where she like actually looked into its eyes and had an interaction with it, but um, there was like a figure at the end of my bed, and I like couldn't move, and you hear that story a lot, and it's really weird how so many people corroborate it. And it'd be really fun to do a video on that. Reading different stories about lucid dreaming. I'm so fascinated. But that is where I'm going to end today's video. Thank you for listening to all of these stories. I loved them. These ones were
another video of these scary Reddit stories.